Is Tesla stock down a half of 1% in after hours because Tesla may be investing or acquiring Fisker? Well, of course, I don't know precisely, but someone is. Fisker stock is down over 27% in after hours after releasing their earnings. Fisker says they are in negotiations with a large automaker for a potential transaction, which could include an investment in Fisker, joint development of one or more electric vehicle platforms, and North America manufacturing. The closing of any transaction would be subject to satisf satisfaction of important conditions, including completion of due diligence and negotiation and execution of appropriate definitive agreements. Now, I highly doubt this has anything to do with Tesla, but I mean, Fisker is a pretty cheap company. Fisker reports Q4 2023 total revenue of $200.1 million, an increase of $128.3 million from Q3 2023. Fisker's Q4 gross margin was negative. 35%. Earnings per share was a loss of $1.23, reflecting a combination of operating losses and a non-cash fair value adjustment related to its 2025 notes. Fisker Ocean production was 4,789 units in Q4, and vehicles delivered to customers totaled 3,818. I mean, you have to give it to Fisker because they delivered substantially more vehicles than someone like a Lucid Motors that only delivered 1,734 vehicles. Even Fisker delivered 3,818 vehicles in Q4 over twice what Lucid did. If you look at Fisker's market cap, it was $391 million before today's 27% drop in after hours. So it is very cheap. I mean, in contrast to Lucid that has a market cap of $7.59 billion, there's something going on here. Fisker also says their new dealer partner model is gaining momentum and is expected to help improve brand awareness and sales throughout 2024. Fisker's dealer partner model announced in January of 2024 has received over 250 expressions of interest from dealers in North America and Europe. 13 dealers have signed dealer agreements. And uh, cash and cash equivalents and restricted cash totaled $395.9 million as of December 31st, 2023. The carrying value of completed vehicles in Fisker's inventory and raw materials was approximately $530 million as of December 31st, 2023. Fisker is priced for absolute bankruptcy. If they have inventory values and raw materials of $530 million, plus rounded up to about 400 million in uh, cash and cash equivalents you're looking at 930 million of uh inventory and cash compare that to fisker's market cap after today's 27 percent drop in after hours roughly at about 230 million or so yeah fisker is either going bankrupt or a insane value at this point. Now again, who is the large automaker that is looking to make an investment in Fisker and help joint develop one or more electric vehicle platforms? Is that Tesla? Well, I don't know, but the valuation is definitely uh, cheap to say the very least. A whole hell of a lot cheaper than Lucid. Nonetheless, whether it is Tesla or not, Tesla, is down about 0.6% in after hours, and basically all of your other EV stocks are as well. Or maybe Tesla stock is down 0.64% here in after hours because Dell soars 20% after beating earnings expectations and cites rising demand for AI servers. Dell came in with revenue of $22.32 billion versus $22.16 billion that was expected. Earnings per share came in at $2.20 versus $1.70. Three cents. The company's client solutions group reported $11.7 billion for the quarter, down 12% 
year over year. They say, quote, our strong AI optimized server momentum continues with orders increasing nearly 40% sequentially. That means quarter over quarter and backlog nearly doubling exiting our fiscal year at 2.9 billion. See, for whatever reason, the markets, they don't recognize the AI potential that Tesla has. Let's be honest. If you are I don't want to say a skilled investor, but if you're a logical investor, you look at AI hopefully like this. What company is providing real world use case AI that is going to benefit people's lives? I explained this in a video about two weeks ago. Wealth is created by helping people on a small scale or a large scale. If you help or better someone's life or make something easier for someone, well, you'll be rewarded for that. If you do that for a lot of people, that's a recipe to become a multi-billionaire. Anyone that is very successful has done something well or helped someone, someone's life on a large scale. Even when you think about, you know, uh, Warren Buffett, he's created a lot of value for a lot of different people, created a lot of money for lots of people. He is rewarded handsomely. Elon Musk, same is true. Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, uh, anyone rich you can think of, they solved a problem. Amazon, well, you don't even have to leave your house. You get packages the next day. Microsoft, they really helped uh, create uh, enterprise software and the computer programs that you're potentially watching this video on. It goes on and on and on and on. So when you're thinking about the next stage of AI, beyond just hardware, let's be honest, a Dell, uh, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, any of these other companies, they are the hardware. They are the pickaxe and shovel industry of uh, AI. Let's be honest. Once that phase is over with, what is there? I mean, what is there? Like, there is obviously commercial AI, like Palantir, like Copilot from Microsoft. But if you're trying to address the masses, as Tim Cook said back in 2017, autonomous vehicles are the holy grail of AI projects. I mean, Tesla's obviously the clear winner there. It's going to take some time, of course, but eventually I think the markets figure that out. Humanoid robots or... I think what will become more kind of mainstream is non-humanoid robots. That uh, is another area that Tesla is working on. But for whatever reason, I'm mentioning this because the markets, they do not look at Tesla as an AI player here. It, we're very early in the innings here. If you're a baseball guy, we're like inning one here with the hardware, with the GPU providers, generative AI enablers. Next round is going to be something different and the round after that. But what's happening right now is every time there's another company that gets a touch of the AI hopium or hype, whatever you want to call it, Tesla stock seems to sell off because Tesla is one of, I guess, the few companies that is a huge market cap player, $600 billion market cap that is not deemed AI. If you look at any of these other stocks out there that are mega cap, you know, companies, they are either big pharmaceutical names like Eli Lilly that and, and Novo Nordisk that are solving obesity with Ozempic and related drugs. There's quite a bit of hype in that area alone. Beyond that, they're AI names. It's a Microsoft. It's a Google, even though they're failing lately with AI. It is a NVIDIA, right? It is an Apple and their new AI adventures they're going to do. Tesla's like the only one that does not possess any AI potential as the markets are looking at it. Obviously, that's not true. Tesla's the biggest AI company out there, but you're getting squeezed every time. People are selling Tesla. They're buying a Dell. They're buying an NVIDIA, an AMD, a Microsoft, because they're looking at Tesla and they're saying, hey, EVs are failing. Demand is failing. And it's going to be a rough 2024 and there's no AI here. I really like, like, you ought to slap your financial advisor if they tell you Tesla is not AI. Seriously, just walk in there, just back and forth, back and forth. Cause I mean, that's insane. The 
the fact that Tesla is honestly not grouped in this category is crazy. But again, just to be clear, every time a company uh, does well on an earnings, blames that on AI, money leaves Tesla and goes into other areas of the markets. That's just the trend that I have noticed. Again, it does not help that Fisker reported some pretty bad numbers, although they're, you know, kind of leaning towards a new business model, putting their cars in dealerships and uh, potentially getting a buyout. It's still negatively affecting Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, everyone else in after hours. Even though Tesla could buy Fisker 2,400 times over again, I mean, it still is having an effect. Now, we also got some bad news today that did not get as much attention, so I will also share this with you. It says sales of electric vehicles in China fell sharply in the first four weeks of February due to disruptions from the Chinese New Year break. Uh, CNEVpost.com reported on Wednesday. So this was news from yesterday and today. It says from February 1st to the, to the 25th, retail sales of passenger electric cars totaled 283,000, down 22% from a year ago and down 44% versus last month. So that was a sharp drop. And it says last month, auto and battery giant BYD reported a sharp sequential drop in January EV deliveries. Its upstart peers, Liotto, Neo, and Xpeng also saw month-over-month -month sales declines. And then BYD on Wednesday also um, kind of raised the stakes for the EV price war. On Wednesday, BYD slashed prices on the refreshed versions of its Han and Tang EV models, following similar cuts across several other models. Most of those refreshed version, versions came with significant tech upgrades, including driver assist features. China's EV markets have now taken the price war into both ends of the EV market. Budget, and mid to high end. Arch rival Tesla discounted the Model Y further on February 1st. It cut Model Y and Model 3 prices in January. Cheaper batteries helped offset some of the price cuts, but BYD and other automakers likely face further margin pressure. BYD's continued export boom will help, boosting sales as well as margins. Not to mention, Lee Auto recently rallied on earnings, one of the few EV stocks, really only EV stock that I can think of, that actually surged on their earnings. Um, Lee Auto said on Thursday, we will share how we will sell a premium pure EV as a blockbuster product. Now, Lee Auto is grouped into the EV category, but they've only sold hybrids so far. Lee Auto's three current EV models include the L7, L8, and L9, all of which are extended range electric vehicles, basically a type of plug-in hybrid. Lee will launch the 2024 versions on Friday as well. And this article says uh, the EV maker focuses on the premium market and continues to outsell startup peers, Neo and Xpeng. It's also sharpened the threat to BYD and Tesla with rapidly rising deliveries. And they are expected to have this big launch on Friday. And uh, they're expected to unveil the first for them ever pure EV vehicle, which is the mega minivan. Now, Tesla also sells a premium product in China. Uh, compared to like BYD, the SEAL, or other popular vehicles in China, Tesla's a premium product. So is Li Auto, apparently. And there's some fears that Li Auto may start to, to eat into Tesla's market share. I don't think that's an issue right now. I think that's something you obviously want to be watching for if you are a Tesla investor. If Li Auto does start to grow and, and rival Tesla and or BYD. But I, I think that's probably an overblown fear as of right now. But yeah, again, Tesla is definitely taking a hit here in After Hours. The S&P 500 took quite a candle in the last minute of trading today. Keep in mind, this is the last day of February. It was actually, uh, it's actually my brother's uh, birthday that was shot and killed back in uh, 2016. He was a leap year baby. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, celebrate that here in uh, next couple of hours or so but uh, it, it is the last day of february and uh there is a lot of rebalancing that does occur towards the end of a month and if we are going to see some seasonal weakness you tend to see that around this period of time 
Uh, you also have Zscaler that reported earnings down about 8% in after hours. Not a big shocker following the earnings that we just got from Palo Alto, but the S&P is actually up about 29 cents in after hours. Tesla is down $1.38 at $200. Uh, dollars 50 cents down about 0.68 percent in after hours it really just shows you uh what kind of effect all of these other guys have on each other fisker a company that's 2400 times smaller than tesla can have an impact to tesla stock and again you got to give it to fisker here even if people hated their products when they reviewed them the fisker ocean is selling twice as many vehicles as neo selling at a fraction of the valuation if you will you kind of got to give it to fisker here but we will see if fisker is in talks with tesla for an investment i doubt it but it is a possibility tomorrow we are going to have some data that comes out at 10 o'clock in the morning you will get ism manufacturing pmi it's highlighted in red here expected to be a major volatility catalyst we will get some kind of reaction in the markets for sure but your big catalyst was today and that was your pce report pce as i reported in the last Last video came in pretty much in line with expectations across the board headline core month over month and year over year but you did see a big downward revision from last month last month was at 0.3 percent it was revised to 0.1 percent on a 12 month annualized basis that's 1.2 percent inflation that it was great news today and that's why certain areas of the markets did well today you did have personal income come in at one percent that was over two times as high as the estimate and personal spending came in line with estimates at 0.2 percent now tomorrow's ISM manufacturing pmi is expected to rise a little bit from 49.1 to 49.5 but again i really don't think you're going to get a huge move based on that if you were going to get a big move this week it was based on the pce report that came out this morning lots of finalized data from the michigan consumer sentiment survey and uh, ism factor ism manufacturing new orders and ism manufacturing prices the prices component of ism manufacturing tomorrow could be the most important part if that falls obviously that's good for inflationary pressures if that rises that's obviously bad for inflationary pressures tomorrow you're also going to get four five fed speakers fed logan fed waller fed bostic from 10 15 to 12 15 so that two hour period three fed speakers fed daily will speak at 1 30 p.m and fed kugler will speak at 3 30 p.m again it is also important to remember specifically with tesla if we can close tomorrow above 200 dollars per share that's going to be great news fantastic news because there is a lot of uh option activity that is around that 200 dollars call now with that being said the market makers are highly incentivized to keep tesla stock under 200 dollars per share because that means they don't have to buy any shares of tesla they can just let the options expire worthless and that's probably another reason why tesla stock is down about one percent today and uh again fisker now to again just to give credit to fisker their their situation's not great they missed on eps big some of that was due to the 2025 uh uh liens and notes that they have out there but you still got to give it to fisker at least they are selling vehicles even if we got a lot of reviews that said they were not the greatest i think for a uh a heavily speculative risk to reward uh stock out there fisker's not bad the valuation's definitely a lot better than uh lucid or some of your other stocks out there and we'll see who ultimately is looking to take a stake in fisker it is a uh, very uh cheap valuation and honestly i wouldn't even be too terribly disappointed if tesla did indeed uh take a stake in fisker just given it's basically pennies uh compared to the cash pile that tesla has hell tesla could buy the entire company for one percent of the cash that they have <laughs> just to kind of put that into a little bit of perspective i do also want to take a brief moment to warn you guys here about the uh ai kind of run-up that we continue to see today arm was up over five percent they have a lockup period on march 12th where softbank owns 90 percent of arm shares outstanding that is insane 
So just to put this into perspective, on March 12th, Arm could sell the float of Arm by like 9x over again. So essentially, you could get 90% diluted. You could see, uh, I mean, the stock crumble on March 12th. If SoftBank wants to do that, they would probably systemically kind of systematically sell the stock because let's be honest, their arm position is worth more than the entire value of SoftBank itself. And I do think if there was a time for your AI hype to kind of die down, it will be when arm comes back under $100 per share after March 12th. That's my base case assumption. You fall under $100 per share. Whether or not you go back to your IP prices of $50 or under that, I think that's really a question of how much does a SoftBank sell an arm. But I do think that is maybe when you start to get a little bit more capital allocation to uh, the next round of AI, which can be something like a Tesla. Let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time as well, check out that link down below in the description of this video follow the x account as well to get to get in on the action over there you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one